Hi, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, thank you for joining us. I've got some special guests with me today. I always love doing webinars like this um, because I don't have to be the only one to talk and we get to hear great ideas from our clients and partners. So um, I just want to give everybody a moment to get in here. If you could hop in the chat and just let me know where you're joining from. Um, I myself am from Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a cool 68 degrees here today, so it's feeling nice outside. All right, we've got Tennessee in the house, Colorado, my fellow uh, Charlotte and Molly. Oh, we got people from everywhere. Love it. Oh, Switzerland. Okay. Look at us being worldwide over here. Ooh, Wisconsin, 26 degrees. Yeah, Lauren, I do not envy you there at all. <laughs> all right, just give it a couple more seconds. Oh, we've got Canada in the house. Yeah, sleep and cold in Michigan. Ooh. All right, well, without further ado, um, I want to introduce my special guest today. So um, we are chatting with two Jackrabbit clients and a Jackrabbit partner today. And we are going to talk about how performances, recitals, showcases, any event that you put on, um, and how you can generate additional revenue through that event. So um, today I've got Lakeisha Cooper from Two Two Chicks. I've got Leanne from Forsyth Academy of Performing Arts. And I've got Brandy from CK Dance Works. Um, so I am just going to start, you know, with some conversation with all of these ladies. I will let them also um, give a little spiel about what they do um, and how their business is run. And then if you have any questions, head over to um, the chat and throw those in there. I've got some um, moderators from Jackrabbit that are going to help me um make sure that we get any of your questions answered but i will at least get the conversation going with some questions i have so let's kick it off with lakeisha tell us a little bit about yourself and tissue you tips i am originally from manhattan but i live in birmingham alabama currently. I've been with Tutu Ticks for eight years um, and love all things performance related. So I love dance. I like attending performances and I love working with studio owners and it's just, it's just what keeps me excited all the time. So it's my passion. Oh, yeah. I love hanging out with Keisha at our trade shows. So awesome. All right. So next up, we've got Leanne. Tell us a little bit about you and Foresight Academy of Performing Arts. Hey, um, so I own Forsyth Academy of Performing Arts, which is a studio just north of Atlanta, um, where we offer musical theater, acting, improv classes. Um, we do obviously a little bit of dance, but we're not really a traditional dance studio. And um, we do a lot of performances. Um, last year, we had 30 different productions that ran in our studio. We sold almost 7,000 tickets um, in our little 100-seat theater. So, um, so we churn out a lot of productions throughout the years. We're coming up on our, this is our 10th season of being open and um, we're coming up on our 200th production. So we're excited about that. Awesome. I love that we've got a little mix going on here on our panel today. Um, and last but certainly not least, we have Brandy from CK Dance Works. So give us a little intro as to who you are and what CK Dance Works does. Well, hi everyone. My name is Brandy Moss and I'm actually a co-owner of CK Dance Works. We're also located north um, of Atlanta in Georgia, kind of opposite directions a little bit from, from where Leanne is. Um, we are a traditional dance studio and we have a, um, a variety of recreational classes as well as co competitive um, level classes and we have about 200 plus competitive dancers that we take to competitions, national and regional. And we also put on a lot of different shows throughout the year. Typically for us in a season, we will put on a year end recital and showcases for our families to end the year. And then we will um, 
we will also put on a Christmas performance. Typically we do a Christmas performance every other year in a theater. So we like to put on amazing shows. We look forward to our shows every year. Our parents do. We're always looking for ways to make the, ne the next show the best show yet. Um, so it's always exciting to do that. We also sell a lot of tickets um, to our shows and we're always looking for a theater that seems to be the hardest thing for people is to find a theater that will hold all of the patrons that want to come see their kids and dance recitals. So um, with all the different colleagues that I spoke with in, in, in our uh, industry, it seems to be a hard thing finding a theater. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure so that is quite a challenge and COVID, you know, didn't help that there for a little while either. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's jump into some conversation. So um, whether it's a recital or um, a showcase or a nutcracker, um, I would love to know what is your favorite show, if you have a specific one in mind, that you have um, produced or attended. So um, Lakeisha, you like to attend shows. So what's, what's your favorite? I would say it, it would be Nutcracker <laughs> for sure. And <laughs> I, I'm getting creative or trying to be more and more creative. So, of course, with Tutu Ticks, we manage online ticketing for all events, not just for the event itself, but also for merchandise. Many studios or performance companies are now trying to come up with creative ways to not only sell the tickets, but also sell the shirts, the flowers, everything else. So we're giving them some creative ways to do that. And ticket buyers love options. Um, I would definitely say Nutcracker because with that, I would get creative. If you're selling tickets, I would just definitely suggest instead of just calling them reserve, create maybe two or three ticket options and you can increase the price on some like the first five rows i would i told many clients name those the sugar plum fairy seats Ooh. instead of just calling Ooh. it reserved <laughs> like it. put a, a spin oh. on it give it a cute name change the ticket price and then the next five rows could be gingerbread um then you could have the next 10 rows or 15 rows or the remaining rows be a different ticket name and you could have tiered pricing uh, a lot of times they also think with like general admission that you can't have tiered pricing as well, but you can do that also. You don't have to assign a specific seat. You can just have general admission level one, general admission level two. So your first five rows are level one and have one price and all other rows are a different price. Doesn't mean they sit in a specific seat, but just in one of those rows or assigned rows. But that's my, that will be my favorite show. I like creating spins and twists on the ticket names, setting up package deals. And that's what Tutu Ticks is here for, to help you manage it all so that you can focus on the other million tasks that you have to have another successful event. We all know it takes a lot <laughs> to put on a show. Um, I'm getting weird feedback. I don't know if anybody else is. It might be my AirPods. Um, well, hot tip from Lakeisha. Thank you for that. Um, what about you, Brandy? Do you have a, a favorite show that you've produced or attended? Um, I also enjoy our Christmas show. And it's always different. It's We always have a theme that goes along with it. And it's we like to rent a place called City Springs um, Theater. And it's just a beautiful theater. It's always decorated really nice for Christmas. Everyone's in the spirit. And um, we, we the, the, that's always my favorite, just because the recital we just do, we just do with our eyes closed now. Um, it, it's it's different. So Christmas is always the fun little side to it. And everyone's just always in the spirit. And I feel like at Christmas, you can definitely generate a lot of extra income on, on tickets because everyone wants to buy everyone's grandparents, everyone wants to buy for their dancer or buy for their little one um, when they get to the actual event even. Absolutely. Something about the the holidays at the end of the year, people are just in the giving spirit and they're in a great mood and all the joy. Round us out with your favorite. Oh, I think... Oh, there you are. In a way. <laughs> you gotta love these live events, you know, with internet issues. Um, it's just... 
So um, tell us about your favorite performance that you've either attended or produced. Um, because we do so much, it's hard to narrow it down, but I think, um, I think I'm a little sentimental. You know, we did a big, typically we do a big summer community musical where we invite adults to come out and audition and we make it a really big celebration in the community. And of course, because of COVID, you know, we had a few years where we couldn't really do that. And so this past year we did a big production of Mamma Mia with just some really amazing cast members from the community, really talented people who just, you know, are like regular people who have regular jobs, but also these secret hidden talents where they're really great singers and dancers and actors. And so um, this summer was really special getting to do that because it just felt like, um, it just felt like coming home again and being able to kind of go back to that normalcy and, and have that experience. So right now that's really near the top of my list. Heck yeah, that sounds awesome. I'm just going to have to start traveling and coming to see y'all's shows. Cause you should. Makes... It's so fun. I was just <laughs> thinking that I want to attend everyone's event. <laughs> As a former dancer, I'm like, take me to all the shows. Like I could sit there and watch a show oh, all day, no. every day. All right. So let's talk about how you promote your performances. Um, Brandy, is there a certain way, strategy, channel that you use to promote your um, performances that you really see um, make your event successful? So for us, we start early. We are always the early birds. I think with um, a business like this, you have to be. Um, are we, especially when you're um, giving families the time that they have to be there and all weekend and they want to have family traveling in. So we start early. We start with emails. We start with Jackrabbit emailing <laughs> and just start really letting, here's the dates. Here's, um, we like to put together a recital packet and they get like, pa um, they get part part one, which tells them the date, very limited information. Um, it does not tell them ticket pricing yet, but it does tell them their their costume price, um, when when the remainder uh, the remaining balance is due and, and the date. So very simple stuff. We start that early on, usually typically right when school starts and right when the dance season starts. We get that information out as soon as we can. And we don't say, we just basically said, here's the weekend it's a location to be announced. So very basic information. Um, we, we also now take a deposit for all of our recreational dancers when they sign up and they pay a registration fee, which is pretty typical for a dance studio when they sign up. Now we include, um, we include a recital deposit for every, class that they are signed up for that would be in the recital recital participating class and we changed that after covid and i'm sure that everyone can relate to how difficult it, it was to get costumes and for dance studios to get costumes um you know in a timely manner from all the costume vendors that we've all worked with for so many years it was nearly impossible to get things after Christmas when a lot of people would want to get their costumes. So we just started doing everything a lot earlier. Um, by getting that deposit, we had the funds to go ahead and get those costumes and have them, whether we used them or not, but we it just helped us to do that. And um, it also kind of gave the parent a commitment, like you're signing your child up mm -hmm. for this it's a season and part of the season is, you're, is they're gonna perform for you and they're gonna be in a show and it includes a costume. So you're you're getting that commitment from them to instead of, oh, it's optional, you kind of like lay it out like the, everyone does it, you know, if, if, you, if you're if you moving, that's different, but pretty much everyone does it. So we start early on. They they know that it's it's the way that we close the season. Um, we do tell them that the tickets range last year from this to this, depending on where we are and what venue we're at, um, we'll set the ticket pricing. Um, some of the venues that we go to, unfortunately, do not allow us to use someone like Tutu Ticks or an outside person. We are kind of stuck to use their box office, which isn't the best because we, we would rather use someone who is in the industry. Um, but sometimes it, we're just, it's not an option. But we start pretty early and we start with emailing. 
I love it. All right, Leanne, what about your strategy? You using email, anything else to promote your performance? Yeah, for sure email. Um, we do a lot with social media, a lot, a lot with social media. When we're doing, um, which Brandy, I love the idea of you just, I'm writing things down as y'all are talking too, because I think um, for us, we typically charge a production fee that, that happens the month of the show. Um, but I love the idea of maybe moving that to the beginning of the process, because I agree, I think that will sort of continue sort of, um, it just, you know, helps with that commitment piece. So I really mm -hmm. like that idea. Um, but we do a lot with social media when it's a show that is like our class shows when we do a big, um, you know, when our, like right now we have seven different casts of the Lion King. So when that show runs, we actually have to limit the tickets people can buy because, um, our space just isn't that big. And so we do so many shows that we, we have a small in-house, um, two small in-house theaters, but we don't seat very many. And so it's, it's, um, you know, but we're not, those, those classes aren't big enough for us to go city Springs where Brandy goes is this beautiful, enormous, um, thing. And so because our stuff is pieced out, so we're, we're running several different shows at the same time we can't rent one big place. We have to have all these individuals. So we actually have the opposite problem with most of our stuff where we have to limit the number of tickets that initially each parent can have access to. That being said, when we do something like Mama Mia, like I mentioned last summer, where we're doing a lot more and it's not an inherent kids production, you know, kids always are going to sell tickets because parents are always going to come and grandparents and whatever. But for a community theater show, we, we really rely heavily on social media. I have a really great um, choreographer actually who I work with, who is on our team, who actually turns out to be really, really talented at social media and um, video production and editing and photography. And so she puts together these really great um, videos and snippets and you know rehearsal footage and all this stuff and really edits it into a cool, piece that will sort of piece out over the the time. And then we've worked really hard to, to build um, not only through Jackrabbit, through our, you know, in-house students and inactive students and our lead file, but also a really big um, email list through our like constant contact program. And we really are diligent about building that list and, um, and communicating with those people as well. I love that. Um, you're going to like when we release this um, Zapier integration that will help with that constant contact thing. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. And then um, Lakeisha. So we've heard email, we've heard social media. What are your clients doing to get the word out about their performances? Any other hot tips? Our clients actually utilize one of the features that come along with the free service we provide, which is customizing their print at home tickets. We have two delivery methods. One, of course, is souvenir tickets by mail for those that would like tickets as a keepsake. But the majority use print at home tickets. They can, they will receive their confirmation email and they can either download their tickets to their phone or print them out. Well, they're about 70% of that page. And let me just backtrack and say, each ticket prints out on an eight and a half by 11. So you've got the individual's undivided attention when they're printing out their tickets, they're checking them to make sure if I've ordered for my entire family, I'm gonna send so many to grandparents, so many to aunt and uncle, and I have mine. On that print at home ticket, there is space for customization. We can actually add your sponsors. We can add logos, artwork. You can promote dance camps and any other programs that you may have. And so I let them know, take advantage of that. If there's customization space here, a way for you to add marketing, utilize it. Absolutely. So they use the print at home tickets as a way to customize it. We also have a new, another new feature, which is the ability to co-brand. Now your ticketing page can have your logo and your brand at the very top at the header with the color, the background that you choose. So we have many new features this year that I think all of our clients and those that are interested in working with us are going to love. Absolutely. Um, and we do have a question from Nicole. And um, she is asking about the integration from Tutu Ticks to Jackrabbit. So um, I can take this one. It is uh, when you have a 
um, that will take you over to Tutu Tick. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, oh, the module that will take you over um, to Tutu Tick. So it is not a um, direct in, direct integration, um, but our friends over at Tutu Tick can certainly help you get what you need out of Jackrabbit um, to sell tickets for your recital. And I do apologize. I can address what will make it easy, though. I can say for those that do utilize, this is the majority. They have Jackrabbit, honestly. And I hear from a lot of my clients when they say we're paying for a recital package. I think one of you mentioned that there's recital packages and they're paying for that in advance and it comes with a set of number of tickets. Well, the way that we handle that is to make sure that anyone's not able to just get in and get those free tickets as we set up codes. And a lot of times those stu the studios will utilize the email address that the parents have on their account as the promo code so that they can enter that code, receive their two free tickets and purchase any additional. We can also set ticket limitations as well, like how many maximum number of tickets they can check out with. I love that. Oh, great idea. Okay, I apologize for my internet. Um, if I disappear, apparently I just come right back. So um, my panel is doing an awesome job of just keeping it going. Um, and that's probably why my sound is a little choppy. So I apologize for that. Um, all right, so let's talk about um, what other uh, things you sell with tickets, because it sounds like ticket sales with this group is a given. So, um, Leanne, is there anything else that you offer with your tickets, um, either as a bundle or um, once you get to the Yeah, so we, um, for the most part, um, we've sort of explored different things with this. And, um, you know, right before COVID, we were sort of exploring doing flowers and doing um, some additional add-ons and things like that. What we found for us is that it almost, that the juice wasn't really worth the squeeze because of the number of back-to-back -back shows that are happening. Um, you know, sometimes we'll have a week where we'll have, gosh, I mean, sometimes we'll have a week where there's six different performances happening from four or five different casts. So it kind of got a little too crazy for us to try to bundle a ton of that stuff. We do have um, a concession stand in our theater where we do sell a lot of snacks and merchandise, t-shirts, things like that, um, which has worked really well for us. Um, I'm curious to, to hear from you, Brandy, to see what else you guys do. Um, from the standpoint of, you know, like I said, what we were doing was sort of before COVID and um, and I'm, I'm interested in seeing um, as we're back, if there are things that we start to build on with that again. Um, we do cast t-shirts and things like that, but we typically do those in advance of the shows and they're not really connected with tickets. Um, we, um, we sell those, you know, typically about a month out so that they can be in in time before, um, before the shows happen. So, um, mostly what we're doing in-house is more concessions and snacks and our popcorn machine is the best money I ever spent. <laughs> I was going to say some of that stuff adds up very quickly. So, um, it may, you know, just be a few dollars here and there, but people are hungry when they go to watch shows. And they love uh, the smell when they walk in and it smells like popcorn. They're like, it's a real show. There's something about it. Yes. Um, so, Brandy, I would love for you to follow up, um, and we're starting to get some questions in the chat. So, why don't you follow up with um, anything additional that you add on besides ticket sales? And while you're talking, I'm actually going to try something with my internet. So, I'm going off camera on purpose this time, and I will hopefully be back with a stronger connection. But you ladies are keeping the conversation going, and I love it. Okay. So, we start also with generating income for the recital and the shows, we start early on with a recital fee. So with that recital fee, um, it includes, it's like a bundle and it costs one price. It includes the child's costume, their tights, any alterations that they need. It also includes their trophy that they get at the end um, of their show. When every child leaves after their, their show, they, they leave with a trophy. Um, 
and it includes their accessories or you know tap shoe ties or whatever their accessories might be um, or any props that they might be using within their dance um, we set that price based off of a built-in profit cushion so um, the recital fee technically the fee is added to that which is the profit margin for the, the business to generate income um, so there's that per per dancer per participant in the beginning of the season so you have that revenue and then later when the show comes then you have an additional whole you know set of revenue um ways to make money in the ticket the ticket pricing is the number one um and we also do what you suggested which was the the tiers the different levels because you have you have different people who you have some families who oh, i'll pay fifty dollars a seat if, to be in the front row and then you have others that would no couldn't ever do that you know so you i love the idea of the different price points to meet everyone's budget i love that i think that's really smart and it does take a little bit of time in the beginning getting your getting your seating chart laid out drawing it redrawing it highlighting what but it's worth it it's worth it to kind of meet all the different needs of the um your families and their price points that they need to stay within um at the recital itself we um we sell this is a really great way to make money um congratulatory ads um so we start doing that around this time you know a couple months before uh, the the recital we send out an email social media um, congratulatory ads are on sale um, they get a quarter page ad with their child a picture of their child they get to say whatever they want it to say congratulations um, to my sweet little and they they whatever they call their child um, and congratulations they'll they'll have like their fifth year of dance or love mom and dad and so they're printed in the program and we sell those for, um, we started out, you know, years ago, 25, we've increased that obviously. So we sell those now for $40, um, a, a congratulatory ad. And, and partly because we print colored programs. And so the printing cost is, is also high. So we just, we build in enough to have a profit there um, and then also print them. And they look really nice. They, they we put all the kids, pictures are all in our programs and as a group so we do group photos and so they become keepsake they're keepsake souvenirs and they want to have them and then they want to they want to advertise in them we also sell business ads um, and we sell those for more you can get a half page or a full page we keep it we keep it really limited to make it easier on us because that's how many year the last thing we want to do is be trying to be uh you know selling ads and uh, trying to put together a show so we make it really simplified so a half page ad or a full page ad for a business they provide everything to our email address by this date and they send the check it's very simple easy and a lot of our families will will that have businesses and they advertise and do that and um so that that's another great way to make money we uh, we do sell flowers but um we let our fundraising committees take over that and that's a fundraising for our our um families to do that are in our competitive we have a fundraising committee so we let them they do pre-sale flowers they also keep it super simple um they get a half bouquet of of pink flowers or red flowers whatever flowers they can get um roses and they keep it very simple they're pre-sale they're back there wrapping them and they're passing them out and they do really well on that um, selling flowers they get the flowers at our local costco um, and they just wrap them up and, and go at it. And when you're speaking about food, we, this past year tried something new. We I rented tents, the big tents. We had outside white tables and chairs to have people, a place to sit and eat in between shows coming and going. We had, we were at a nice high school. We had, um, space to do this, but we had food trucks. So we scheduled food trucks. They came in and lined up on the curb and we just provided it you could always set the price of the food truck if you wanted to make money a little bit 
on that. We we didn't, we just provided it, but I think that would be a great way you could also do that. We had the cotton candy food truck came with the bubbles and we were going out. The kids loved it. Kind of kind of ice was there. Anything to do with the kids. They come out, they've got their flowers, their trophy, and now they want to get their ice cream or their kind of ice. And so that would also be a way that someone could generate some money. We always we have a shop CK store on our website. We always do a pop-up shop uh, at the recital to where we're selling things that they can grab and go with. Um, that's, you know, those are always great ways to generate some income. You have some amazing ideas. I know. I was like, well, um, I know where I'm going. Um, that's love it. I love it. <laughs> um, Lakeisha, I know you answered in the chat, but I wanted you to answer for everyone. Um, talk to us about how to do yes. pricing works so that people can get an idea of how sure. it helps them generate income for stuff like that. Absolutely. So we actually allow you, the business owner is, we like to make sure that you have options so that it's set up the way you need it. We have two, two different ways that you can go. You could either set pricing as all in, where you would set the ticket price at $20 and we would deduct our $1 per ticket plus 5% from that amount and then pay you the balance. Or you can say, okay, I need to make $10 per ticket and let the ticket buyer pay the fee on top they would then on a $10 price ticket would pay $11.50. So the service is completely free to the business owner. You don't pay us anything. There is no contract at all, which is why many companies love working with us. They move from venue to venue and they can just work with two two ticks no matter where they go, they're not locked in. And I know some, some studios or businesses are actually having to use the box office at that venue and then we have a way that we can do that as well because we have some that are locked into a contract but they still work with us on that but in regards to pricing it is one dollar plus five percent on your base ticket price and you get to decide whether that fee is on top of your price or if you want it all in so they don't see the fee the same thing with merchandise as far as yeah. merchandise sales they could, let's say the first three rows are VIP, you could offer just a VIP t reserved seat or a VIP bundle where they may be purchasing that seat and it comes along with a rose and a bear. Love that. All right, Brandy, um, when you were talking about recital fees, um, we had a couple people ask, um, what what is your recital fee per student or if it's by family, what does that look like at your studio? Okay, sorry, I had muted. Um, so oh, our no, recital, yeah, um, per student, we charge two hundred dollars, um, and that is that is for their first class. If they are in additional classes, we don't. It it goes down. It, so they're, they're basically covering the cost of of that of the additional classes. So it's, we charge 80 for every additional class they're in, they're paying $80, which basically covers their costume, their tights. And, you know, we sometimes just eat the cost of alterations. Uh, we do, that is something that we do provide for our students, which is we, we all do all the alterations. So a lot of studios don't do that because it is a lot, um, but I just happen to have a mother who sews. And so we're able to, we're able to offer that to our students. And we have another um, dance mom that is a, is a really, we have several in-house seamstress. So we're, between the three of them, we're able to get things done um, and get get alterations done and versus you know the parent having to do that. So whereas our fees might be a little higher, we are providing a lot of things with that. That's great though. It makes it nice and convenient for parents and they appreciate that, I'm sure. <laughs> um, oh, and one other right. thing I forgot yeah. to mention is in our recital fee, we also include, um, they get all of the um, the digital files to every show. So we have a professional photographer and videographer that comes in and they film everything. Well, now everything's digital. So we give that to each family so they get a copy of every single show, every single performance. They're not buying, um, they're not having to buy, you know, back in the day, uh, 
I need to get a show to this. I need to buy a VHS to the six o'clock show. So now the luxury of technology, they just get it all, you know, in the form of a download. And um, we also bring in a professional photographer who takes still pictures because we do not allow parents to do that. And we say, you know, you know, you're not allowed to take pictures, but we have a photographer who will, and we upload all those pictures and they can download them for free. So it's all kind of bundled in. I love that. Um, Leanne, do you have um, someone come in and video to sell DVDs or are DVDs still a thing? I mean, <laughs> I remember when we had the VHS and you had to make sure that you were kind and rewind and all that good stuff. So um, do you have anybody come in and video or um, photograph your shows? We don't. Um, we used to, but the licensing companies, because, you know, what we're doing are licensed musical theater productions. And so mm -hmm. the licensing is very different for what we do than what a traditional dance studio does. And we're a lot more restricted. Um, and so technically for most of the shows that we license, we're not technically allowed to film and distribute. Um, that being said, I always wink at the parents and say, you can take any videos you want. I'm not going to tell anybody. Um, so in, in a way, I mean, I guess it's a, it's a revenue piece that we, you know, we miss out on because of just the nature of the beast. Um, but I'm, um, kind of a rule follower when it comes to this stuff, because we, we have to play by their rules in order for them to keep letting us license their materials. So that's one thing that's a little bit different for us than would be for a traditional dance studio. Oh yeah, absolutely. Do you have any kind of program book or anything or pamphlet that you provide or sell um, at your show? You know, we've never sold one. Um, and we used to do hard copy programs for everything. And then um, a, it was actually right before COVID because um, we joked that we've kind of been ahead of the curve. We went to completely online digital programs. Um, and so when you come to this, to the theater, there's a QR code. We have a cute poster that has all the kids pictures on it for whatever production that is. And so you can scan the QR code, which takes you to the online digital program, um, which has worked really well for us because we have a lot of last minute changes of things. You know, it allows us to literally on a dime, we can update a cast, um, you know, a, a kid's role in the show or, update a photograph or you know whatever because stuff happens mm -hmm. and um so it's yeah. it's easy for us to update that on the fly um that's worked really well for us um in the summers when we do our big shows we typically will sell um sort of like what brandy mentioned we'll sell um ads to the community um i think we'll eventually get back to selling some ads for like congratulatory ads like she mentioned we used to do that a, a while back i think eventually we will um we'll get back to that but um i see the question about promoting the events yes that's one of the nice things about um using a digital program is that we can hyperlink everything so it immediately says um you know uh, click here for to enroll in summer camps which is what it all what they all say right now and so it's a quick People can do it while they're sitting in their seats. Um, they can do it before the show starts and we can link to almost anything. And it's a nice, I think a win for businesses that promote with us because it's an immediate direct hyperlink to their website. Um, so I, to me as a business owner, that's a real value add. No one has to remember to hold that piece of paper or find it when they get home or whatever. Um, as for, I see the question about who do we use? We actually just do it all ourselves. I have a, we use WordPress for our regular website and I know just enough to be dangerous. And so um, I have a guy that kind of helps me when I get lost and he sort of set up a template for me and we just work off that template. Um, and so every time we just copy and paste and put in a new URL and every show has their own. And then the other thing about that is that it lives forever. So parents can bookmark that. They've got pictures of their kids and pictures from the show and whatever, and they can bookmark it and it lives forever. We don't ever take them down. So it's sort of like a, um, a keepsake just in the digital age. <laughs> I love that, you know. With our uh, online uh, ticketing service, I do remind everyone to with Tutu Ticks, we, will, we can actually send out a mass email for you to all ticket buyers, even if you wanted to buy show and send out the digital link to the program. It could also go out in the ticket order confirmation as well. I would like Very to nice. share. 
Um, we also, you know, like Leanne, we, the past two years because of COVID, um, we also went to digital. And there were a lot of benefits to digital. Like you said, you can, if you misspell Susie's name, you can fix it really quick as soon as her mom tells you, and then all of a sudden it's fixed. Um, so there's so many great things about um, the digital program. Um, when during our COVID year, we were forced to have our recital out front of our building in the empty lot. We brought in a full size 50 by 50 stage that came in on an 18 wheeler truck. And we had seats like a outdoor wedding and a full production company set, put it on. We did it right out front of our building. We used our building as the dressing rooms and the holding rooms. It was so stressful, so much work, but every single person that was a part of it said it was their favorite recital in the history of our, of our studio and asked us if we would continue to do that. Um, I said, I would look, my whole hair would be, head of hair would be gray if I had to do this again, because Georgia weather, you just can't, it's just like a lottery. Mm -hmm. You know, we were so worried about the weather. Um, we're next to a Publix and they were coming over like, why are you using our parking lot? Y'all got to shut down. I'm like, oh, just, <laughs> just bear with us. We, we've only have eight more shows to go. Um, but it was super stressful. It was great. But one thing that we did that year, and I, I think this is really neat, and I would encourage people to use it, is we, we, you know, the fans, when you go to high school graduations and they're hot and that you get a fan of the, of the child's name. Well, we did these big fans and it was our logo and the name of our show. On the back side of the fan was a big QR code. And it was like, thank you for joining us they scan the QR code and that was our digital recital program. So it was a really that. neat thing. We had the fans on each chair when they got there. So, cause we knew it was going to be hot, you know, um, it was a really neat thing to do. So that's, that was fun. Do you have a marketing background? Cause you've got a lot of great ideas. No, I'm actually self-taught. I opened a studio when I was, very young at the age of 20 i'm about to turn 50 and i w did not I, I am not a college graduate i did not have the luxury of, of having that in my family or or the means to do that so i was i tell my children all the time i'm like self-taught i'm always learning from them they're at you know my girls have gone through the university of georgia and i'm like tell me what you're learning and and my daughter's like well i'm just amazed that you know all this i'm like just you know, I, it's just I love it. trial and error and also being in the industry for a while and doing things wrong and you learn how to do them right. You fail fast. I say passion, learn. drive, and experience. <laughs> All right. Well, I am going to go off script here. Um, not that there really is a script, but I want to know from our people that are attending, do you use the Jackrabbit export to create your program because we're talking about program books here and spelling things wrong. And I feel like there might be an opportunity to, to plug that a little bit. So I'm going to look at these answers coming in. I've got some that says, yes, there's no other way they would do it. Some that say they use something else and some that want to know more. I bet you if it hasn't already happened, Lauren's going to drop something in the chat to uh, link to that. But um, those are still coming through. So we've got 48% um, that says no, but tell me more. So if you are using Jackrabbit to set up your recitals or performances, there is a nifty little button that says export to Word. Um, and that takes all of your performance names all of your student names that have a check mark beside them. It will have the name, comma, space, next name, you know, all in the line there for you. Um, obviously, if you like to jazz up your program book, um, you would need to add to it, but that is a great way for you to have all the names spelled correctly. Um, not forget anybody, because heaven forbid, grandma and grandpa are there and you've left their name out of the program book. Um, <laughs> and it does happen because we're human and it's impossible to get it exactly 100% correct, but this does help a lot. So if you are not using that export, I highly, 
highly recommend. So if you are having any trouble with it, please reach out to our support team. Um, this will alleviate hours of work for you. So um, that is our goal here. All right. Um, that was yeah, Brandy. Um, about the the exporting the lineup um, for us, if you're if you're dealing with a lot of different dancers and shows, and uh, you're trying to line up your show, and they're in multiple dances, this is really helpful because it tells you if there is a conflict, and you can also um, sort by family. So if you're if you're putting on a multi a lot of different shows, and you're trying to help families stay within the same show and you can't make every, it sometimes it's impossible but you do the best you can to try to keep some families in the same show so they're not having to come to so many different shows um it, it's really helpful to use these the export in the lineups because it, it you it, it kind of shows you conflicts when you're done yep. with a lot of yep. students so you can set a conflict gap so you can say i need at least three dances for each dancer to change costumes we all know we have those Teen kids or kids that have been doing this forever that can change in 30 seconds flat. I think we used to see how fast we could change between um, performances. Um, so obviously, you know, you can leave those there. But if you've got um, an eight year old who's in two classes and they only have two numbers, it's going to show you that. And so then you can adjust your lineup um, to alleviate that stressful moment for the kid and the parent. Um, that was a great addition to that. It's, the recital module can do a lot of things. Um, all right, so I'm going to pose this next question to Lakeisha um, because it is specifically about tutu kits. So um, the question is about combining in-studio ticket sales with in-house ticket sales. So it sounds like, you know, how do you smooth out that process of selling them ahead of time and then also adding them um, in-house at the facility? So we can actually, as far as selling them online, we do have a QR code flyer that you can post up for selling them online. But as far as the in-house, we have a door ticket kit. So for any unsold seats, we can actually stop ticket sales at a specific point, print them out, ship them to you so that you can sell them. Some studios ask for the PDF of the ticket and not the physical ticket so that we can do that. But we do have ways to basically take care of the online tickets and ticket sales for in-house. And for those that you actually promise out or guarantee with recital packages. Awesome. So while we're on this topic, Lakeisha, what have you found? Sorry, I got some feedback. I don't know if anybody else is hearing that. Um, what have you found as far as how Tutu Ticks help take some of that um, big day stress out of your our your clients, our clients, mutual clients? Um, you know, what does Tutu Ticks do to lift some of that responsibility and stress off of you know getting ready for the big day? Honestly, I just tell everyone I'm working with, dump all the information on me. Let me manage it all for you. You tell me what you need and set in motion, and that's what I'm going to do. That's what our team is doing. Honestly, once you sign up with us and start working with us, it's a partnership. We're here to take the load off because you've got, like I said, so many other tasks to make sure you're having another successful event. So we make sure you have a QR code flyer that's ready so that for those that have not purchased tickets and I'm, hey, I'm just showing up with mom and dad or with grandparents they can scan that QR code flyer and purchase right there on site. You don't have to worry about any cash, cash transactions. If you do have, because there are some individuals that are just not tech savvy or just don't want to order online, that's where those pre-printed tickets would come in hand and we would actually have those mailed to you in advance so that you can process any cash transactions that you would need for tickets. My suggestion is when you def when you know that you're having a pre-sale, then a public sale, some organizations also like to increase ticket sales by $5 the day of to keep those people from dragging it out, especially if you're doing general admission events. What's going to what's going to nudge me to buy my tickets now when I can just show up and be in line first the day of the event. So I would always say if you're going to increase your prices, make sure that you set the prices that you want for specific time frames in advance and we can set that in motion for you so the date of your event 
ticket sales will go set to it. They will actually roll over to a new price. People that are buying tickets can still purchase online and you don't have to get involved unless they're absolutely wanting to pay with cash. And we take care of that too by getting those tickets to you and having them in hand the day of. Same thing with your merchandise. I had someone the other day, actually two days ago, just sent me a list of 40 items. They're doing concessions, they're doing bears, flowers, everything. And instead of sending parents here to get your bears, here for your shirts, give, give them a one-stop shop. While they're purchasing tickets, they will see the merchandise items as well and we'll go ahead and add them. Love that, love it. Um, all right. So let's go through one more question. We've talked about things that work well. We've talked about learning from experience. Um, let's share something that we tried and it didn't work. And we said never again, because here at Jackrabbit, we honestly believe in trying anything, you know, fail fast, learn, try again. Um, so Leanne, what's something that you've tried that you were like, I'm glad I tried that. And now I know to never do that again. Um, the first thing that comes to mind and maybe I'll, I'll, um, have another brainstorm, but the first thing that comes to mind is a lot of theaters will do, um, they'll call them stargrams or like little well wishes that when you arrive at the theater, you can, you know, for $5 or $2, whatever, send a note backstage to your kid or your friend or whatever. And, and, you know, we take them to the dressing room and whatever. And um, we found that that didn't work for us because everybody was too nice and everybody would come in and try to buy one for everybody and whatever, like it just turned into a nightmare. Um, and it was all very sweet. Like it was all out of kindness and goodness. Um, but it made a logistical nightmare, a complete nightmare that wasn't, didn't make it worth the two bucks or whatever it was going to be. Um, you know, we may, someday we may circle back around to that and figure out a different way on the backside to manage it. You know, um, one thing we do that does work really well is we use our older students to help. Um, they actually are the ones who run our concession stand. They're the ones who help backstage. Um, and, and so maybe there's a way sometime in the future where we can revamp that to make it work. But that was a colossal disaster um, out of just purely niceness, which is a great problem to have. It was, it was like parents coming in and going, I'm gonna buy one for everybody in the cast because I don't want anybody to be left out, which is so sweet. Um, and probably there's a, Brandy could probably tell me a really good way to monetize that um, niceness <laughs> because I think she's our marketing queen. Um, but that, yeah, that would be my, that's my first instinct. I might have another brainstorm along the way. But. All right. All right. Who knew that the, the fail would be out of, you know, people being so generous. All right, Brandy, anything come to mind when you think about, yeah, I tried that and I will not do it again. Yeah, so I would say it would be a hard one to say what the top would be, but um, we would we used to let our parents come backstage and get their little ones after they danced, so before the show ended, and that became a nightmare, um, and it it just took too much time. It was just too much. So now you're not allowed to come and get your performer until the show is over. Um, unless there's an emergency or a situation where they, they've already like uh, got it pre-approved. And we, like Leanne, also utilize all of our older dancers. They all help backstage. We have different dressing rooms. We allow one parent from each group to stay in the dressing room, but that's all we allow. We, don't, uh, we do not allow parents back there. We actually uh, use the uh, you know, the curtains, like the show curtains as a like a check in point, you check your child in, this is the backstage area, you have to come back at the end of the show. And, and one way to keep them backstage is we bring them all back out for a bow at the end. So everyone comes out with their classes onto the stage, we do one big group finale bow with all the teachers. Um, and everyone involved and then they get to stand up parents get to stand up and take pictures and everybody's clapping and the kids love it they're like oh, i'll get to go back out on stage especially the little bitty ones who might have already only gone out for like three minutes um so that's kind of what we would what we don't allow anymore yeah. totally. and, and also 
parents coming in the dressing room, it, coming backstage. It's we don't allow that. If and then even if they have a crier, we don't allow the mom to come because the the, the child won't stop crying if the mom comes. Uh, so we don't allow parents unless they're actually workers. And I try to use um, alumni parents to come help because they always want to come back. And I try to use parents helping backstage that don't have a like necessarily a, a dancer dancing in that show because then they can give their full attention to actually helping instead of to their own child. All right. That was another good one. All right, Lakeisha, do you have any anonymous stories you would like to share on behalf of what you've seen happen? I would definitely <laughs> say the one has been where it's been general admission seating and there is a multiple event series and wanting to allow someone actually promised this and announced it and promoted it before talking with anyone about how the ticket sales can be set up but basically having about six to eight performance times and wanting to allow the ticket buyers that came into cast a come in cast b and g or those that came in cast h come in k and l <laughs> which just created a nightmare <laughs> so i would definitely say if you're doing ticketing yourself just or you're thinking about talking with an online ticketing provider definitely just give some of the scenarios on what you're thinking about because if we don't have a solution we're going to help come up with a workable solution for what you need absolutely do not absolutely. do not suffer in silence by yourself <laughs> lean on the expert <laughs> all right so i am going to close us out I appreciate how um, graceful this audience has been today with my sound and internet issues. Um, you guys have made me feel at ease, um, not, you know, freaking out about my, my connection. So I appreciate that. And then I appreciate these three ladies for taking time out of their busy schedules to jump on here and give us all some insight and help us brainstorm on ideas. So I've got some next steps for you and then I will let you all go enjoy the rest of your day. Um, if you are a Jackrabbit client, please join our Facebook user group. Um, that's exactly what that group is for. If you have ideas, something didn't work or something worked really well that you want to share or you want to know how someone um, did their digital program book, you can ask that question there. It's a great forum for you to bounce ideas off of. Um, if you are new um, to the Jackrabbit scene and you heard about this recital program export and you have got to know more, um, please reach out to our product coach uh, team. They can be reached at info at jackrabbittech.com. Um, they would love to show you a demo of anything in Jackrabbit that you would like to see or get you started with a free trial. And if you are a Jackrabbit client and you heard about this recital export and you need to know how to start using this ASAP for your next recital, please, please, please get with our support team. Um, you can schedule a checkup call and one of our support exports or experts will get you going on your export so that you can make your program book a lot easier this year. So all of the necessary links and email addresses are in the chat. Um, again, thank you everybody for joining us today, and I hope you got some great ideas and notes out of this, and thank you to my panelists. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Yeah, thank you, everyone. It was fun. <laughs>